Let's just pass that on her part. Python our hardware this week in the newsletter. You want to talk about a few things. So we have okay. Python 9 release candidate. Yes, finally enough bugs were squished by Jepler and Dan and Scott and some other contributors um, that we were able to get out of beta, out of alpha and into a release candidate. Um, that means we really want more people to use 9.0, find bugs, we will squish them. Um, they're doing an excellent job and we hope to do an actual release in the next week or two. So. Uh, okay. Everybody will be updated. Um, this is a major release. There's a couple of breaking changes, um, which is documented. You can see the the blog post for the changes. I think display.show is one that I think got moved. And also um check out our API changes. SD card mount location needs to exist as a you know, can't you just can't make a fake directory on the fly. And then what was the third big one? Boy, I don't remember. There's a couple little couple little details an mpy format change also because we merged with upstream micropython um so yeah you're gonna have to re-download your mpy files but that's a great reason to use circup or the uh, bundle fly okay and then what else did you want to talk about this week uh let's see the other thing that i thought was interesting I don't remember. I remember I told you, but then I took it. Yeah, was it in this? Was it in this? Yeah, but boy, I don't remember what it was. Shoot. I'm so jogging memory as we go through this enormous newsletter. There's a lot of cool projects. I like this. Oh, well, the pager thing was funny. Oh, no, wait. There was something other than the pager thing. What was it? There was the RC candidate. Can you keep going down? No, no, no. Boy, I don't remember. I feel a little full. I probably should have, I should write it down and send it to you so I remember. Well, we want to talk about. Oh, this was actually cool. The embedded Swift with that was quite interesting. Um, so, the, you know, I think Apple's like, oh, hey, you know, like MicroPython is kind of cool, but we want people to use Swift. So they've created Swift that can run on That's STM and RP2040. So, you know, I don't write Swift, but it's like, it's kind of interesting to see a language go back, right? Like not, yeah. not just require heart, like more intense uh, circuitry, but um uh going back in time i don't remember what the other thing but the pager stuff was i think funny yeah we um because when we did pager projects we did some pop seg decoding projects using a pager to like get the um it's like a there's a bipolar signal but to like a differential signal that you can parse with like a microcontroller and so we did a pop seg decoder um that used an existing pager you'd use the guts of a pager as the antenna um, receiver and like people were like totally outraged and like how dare you decode pager and I'm just like it's not encrypted guys so <laughs> if you're yeah. using pager data it's out there and like there are people who still use emergency responders uh still use the pager network so I thought it was you know it's not it's no different than if you have a radio scanner you can you can listen in on uh radio signals from you know police fire department and emergency um so I thought that was kind of cool to use python to decode uh, yeah. XAG and print it out yeah, that was um, the one that you meant to talk about. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, people, you know, I remember a Kingpin was decoding Poxag pagers in like 97. So, you know, this is a perennial project. Uh, every generation yeah. we discover this. And then the chat DJ Devin mentioned um, that Jepler had mentioned this in the weekly meeting. There were about 300 plus unique contributors between eight and oh, nine. Oh, now I remember what it was. We hit the 9,000th issue slash pull request. We had PR number 9,000. So now we were over 9,000. There it is. That's right. It was the pull request 9,000. So it's it's issue and pull request, but still, it's like, that's a number. That's a big deal. Also, it's like nice and round. Yeah, we're almost up to 3,000 learn guides. We have, you know, we've had over. Our yeah, this is cool. This is a, good, a contributor. Supported. Fixed. 9,000 issues fixed. And yeah. now we're up to nine. So this is the thing. Nine, 9,000, it's thematic. Yeah, one of the cool things about CircuitPython is this is open source we want the world to have it and use it and it's you know it's doing surprising things that we never um, expected or planned uh, to do and there's lots of people working on it and it's uh something that people run their businesses on they they're able to make hardware and not have to worry about um the latest firmware we generate all the the firmware bits and stuff and uh there's easy ways to uh can i say can i say a quick thing yeah. um so one thing that's interesting is from a previous INPI, which I had to do the text, the you know the layered module. Um, what I didn't realize is actually they have a MicroPython build for the module for the NRF, 
and it's it's you know they don't release the source code but it's still very interesting to see more and more companies are using MicroPython as a way to get their eval boards up and running quickly um with yeah a lot of uh, developer investment time yeah and i think since so many people know python i think that's been the change in the past maybe there's a lot of efforts like maybe they'll try arduino but i think now python seems to be where where folks uh to get started really fast are going Okay, that's Python on Hardware. We do this every single week. You can get this delivered to your inbox. You can get it on GitHub. You can check it out on Adafruit Daily. All those places. Check it out. Okay.